of some of the terms that we're using, we've used whole systems, uh, whole systems thinking we've used. We're, we will be using terms like pathway, and I just want to run through what we mean by those because those are terms that we'd like to use for shorthand, but we want to make sure that everyone has the same understanding of the terms that we're going to going to use. So this is just a very short um, or rel relatively short presentation running through uh, those terms. So hopefully Grant's going to, there we go. That's the coffee break that we had. And now we'll just uh, be covering the whole system thinking. So when well, we're going to start with this one, uh, Grant, if you could have the next slide. The grand, it's probably loading. There we go. So what do we mean by this whole system approach? Now I've referred to this a number of times already in the previous uh, presentation, but this definition has been taken from the Shetland Islands Health and Social Care Partnership Joint Strategic Commissioning Plan. And what is being described here is that we want the approach that a single health and care system, we, what, that's what we want. We want one single uh, health and care system, which is seamless from the point of view of the service user. So again, that's coming back to me as an individual. If I am receiving services, if I'm using services on the island, it shouldn't matter to me which who's providing that. It should be pretty much seamless. It's just a question of am I getting what I need at the point when I need it? So that's that's been taken, even although when we've been talking about whole system thinking, we'll be thinking about that we we're going to I'm going to show you a model which comes from Canterbury model, which has been picked up by NHS Shetland. This is completely there's complete agreement between the NHS board and the um, integrated joint board. So this is the the model that uh, really describes what it, it graphically what we're talking about. So if you can imagine this as being a big circle and obviously for the benefit of having it on a slide, it's much easier to have it in that slice. But for the whole in a whole um, circle at the centre of that, you've got the individual person and their health and care needs, which may be anything that from a long term condition to um, being pregnant or uh, breaking a leg or having uh, been identified as, as having cancer, for example. So anything that an individual is needing, they have a number of uh, circles, concentric circles round about them. Closest to them generally will be the others around about us. And in that we've included um, unpaid carers and community services. These are folks who are round about us who contribute to our health and well-being. And coming back to Shantini's talk, she included there the um, unpaid carers, which obviously we don't want to lose uh, lose focus on folks who are really close to individuals and are able to give them support either in their home or or uh, certainly, well, probably mo mostly in their home. Around the next concentric circle that we've got there is how the services help us with specific issues. So that's that would include GPs, it would include nurses and pharmacy. So that's the next layer out. It's maybe the first place that you would call with um, a minor ailment or with those ongoing uh, conditions that uh, you would generally go back uh, backwards and forwards to, for example, your GP with and that and that no, we're not just talking about GP, we're talking about the health centre and all of the services which are, are provided within that health centre and then also um, pharmacy. Then you've got the more specialist services. So here we've got consultants, we've got specialists, for example, in mental health. Um, and that might be, I think, in the example that we're going to use, we've, we've um, actually put the hospital, your hospital support in that specialist services uh, area. And then on top of that, you've got maybe more specialist treatment centres. So, for example, if you were uh, pregnant and you were considering about where you were going to give birth, you might be able to use uh, the on island services uh, which are provided at the hospital. Um, you obviously have other care, which is midwifery care, which may be provided in community hubs. And then if you, for example, have a 
pre-existing condition, which is going to mean that you might need a little bit more support or you might need other specialist services for the birth, then that would that might mean, for example, um, traveling to Aberdeen and having uh, having the birth in in Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. And that's that's maybe what we're thinking about in those specialist treatment centers. So that's usually that's pretty much all in a usually in a in a hospital setting. So if we take that idea and start to map out some of the things that we would have on Shetland in those different areas. So if we take an individual and we have, I was, we were going to call him Jimmy in the middle there. Jimmy's a bit older. He um, has a number of things available to him in that others around us. Uh, because he's a wee bit, wee bit older, he's got, he's got some carer support. Uh, and he's got a carer support group which he can attend. He is living with dementia, so he has um, a positive dementia group that he can attend. And there's a memory lane cafe. Um, and as well, there's a there's there's the option of having a buddy tracking device. So there's a number of things available to Jimmy when he's in his in his home, um, living with uh, the situation that he's in. He's quite active, but he has maybe an early stage of uh, of dementia. There are other services that are sort of waiting there that he can also, uh, he might already be in touch with, but are, are there um, if he needs them. So his GP, for example, um, there might be a dementia advisor, there might be, he might already be on some medication, so the, the pharmacy is somewhere that he might be going into. There's There might be outreach services and community mental health team. We've got there, you can see that there's a dot there for uh, supported accommodation. We've got that in between the how the services help us with specific issues and into the specialist services. And then there's uh, continuing on the specialist services. There's, for example, the ambulance service. These are uh, organisations that Jimmy would would contact if he needed them. There's the hospital, which is obviously providing another level of support. And then there's on-call services. And then again, in the specialist treatment centres, we've got some of the uh, the NHS Grampian uh, provided support and some of the acute services within uh, Gilbert Bain. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how for, for an individual, there are a whole stack of things that are available in those sort of further uh, different levels of support, which are sort of slightly more, more uh, separated from that individual. So what we were going to do is to go through a what if, a scenario, a, a sort of story about something that's happened to Jimmy. So what's happened is he's had a fall and what the first thing that he'll do because he's had the fall is he's going to be phoning 999 and the ambulance service will come to his home and take him to the Gilbert, Gilbert Bain Hospital. So we're just thinking about sort of one instance, one thing that could happen. And what we want to show here is how these pathways are not always linear. They can get quite complicated. Getting into hospital is relatively straightforward. But if we now start to put on top of that, what would happen if, for example, he's been in hospital and he's had some treatment and he's now ready to be discharged back to home. You can see now the thing, there are a lot more people who have to be involved. There's pharmacy might be involved. The GP needs to be informed about the situation. There must be, might be uh, a post-diagnostic link worker. Um, there'll be allied health professionals, perhaps occupational therapists and physiotherapists who are involved. Um, and there are a number of people, this, this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. For Jimmy himself, he doesn't, he, all he needs is all of these things to work together. Um, and sometimes that's, that's one of the things that when we're talking about pathways, we might want to be thinking about is how do, for example, the pharmacy who are, let's say, how do they know that Jimmy has been discharged and although he normally picks up his meds, somebody else might be picking them up for him? Or do they need to be delivered to his house? How do all of these people who need to be involved know what's happened? How does the GP 
how is the GP informed that there's a discharge? So as people move in and out and through these services, that will change on the basis of their, their health and, and care needs. Now, I think we've got another slide that just shows a little bit in a little bit more detail. Once uh, I can go on to the another, next, there we go. So once um, you can see once he's home, then again, there are a number of things that are available uh, for Jimmy as an individual. He's got, again, the, the carers groups, the support group, uh, memory lane is in there. It's not so much about the variety of things that is open to an individual. It's about, and here I quote, uh, again, this is, this is a, a piece of text that comes from the um, Health and Social Care Partnership Joint Strategic Commissioning Plan, but it's that our focus will be on making sure that all the services are aligned and coordinated around the people's needs. So this is something where if that's your aspiration, if you really want everything to be joined up and for the individual to look as if it's seamless, one of the ways of checking that that's happening is by looking at the pathway is that by drawing out the steps that the individual takes in order to get the support that they need. And there are a number of different ways of doing this. You've seen that one of the ways that you've got is how we had how we draw it out there. But the, for the pathway for us, as it's summarised here, it's the route that the person takes through the services to access health care or an alternative. And we've got some for instances there. Now, one of the ways that we've found has been very helpful to show this, and we've done this quite a lot in the different services in different health boards and with Scottish Government nationally, is to draw out what we would call a pathway. Now, lots of people use pathways, it's, they're not new, um, but we're just finding it as being, we find it's a very helpful term, very, term to use. And it's a really good one for flushing out spaces where somebody assumes that something else is happening in the step beforehand. It flushes out those possible disconnects in between where services are being provided. So what you can see here as an example is we've taken Jimmy's example again and we've drawn it out as a line. So where we had in the previous slide, we had it jumping backwards and forwards on the levels of what is closest to Jimmy. Now we've just we've taken it as a line. And what we've done here is just taken the di discharge. This is not necessarily correct uh, for Shetland. It's not necessarily in a level of detail that we would use, but it's more of as an example. So you can see that we've had what we've described there are steps. And if you're looking at this on a very small screen then you might may well not be able to read this but let me just go through it so that um, I can fill in any of the gaps that you can't read. So there's an incident there's something happens the person falls at home they call 999 and the uh, ambulance service take them into hospital. There's then a period where there's a, a, there, a diagnosis is made and it might be that the person is then discharged at that point but if we take it that the person hasn't been discharged um, but they're admitted to hospital. Treatment takes place and then at the point of discharge, there's then there's a, a element of discharge planning then. And you can see the bubble for discharge planning, which is around about in the middle of your slide here, has a number of supporting actors. There's a lot of people who have to be involved in this, as we saw on the slide. We've got the secondary care team. We've got the individual themselves and their family about what they want to happen and how much support, for example, the family could give. There's the primary care team, there's carers and other agencies, and then there's the allied health professionals, as we said. So that's a lot of communication that needs to happen at that point. There's then discharge happens and uh, there's stages that have to happen after that, like ordering medication uh, there's discharge documentation, then ordering medication and discharge itself. Now, hopefully, I don't want to concentrate too much on that pathway itself, but you can see from just step, drawing it out in steps, it's a really good check that everything is actually joined up. 
And as I say, it's an area, it, it's something where we can f hopefully identify areas that we think we should concentrate on. So where we would normally do this, we would then annotate on this map, having spoken to everybody that's involved, which are the areas that you think we should uh, we should focus on? Which are the areas that are not maybe working quite as well as we'd hoped? Which are the areas that we want to see if we can come up with some innovation and some solutions and some alternative ways of working around? So hopefully that gives you an idea of what we mean by a pathway. Now, when we go into this afternoon, what we're going to be looking at is whole system working across health and care. So hopefully after the talk that we've had this morning and what I've just presented to you, that's all absolutely crystal clear. I really hope it, uh, hope it is. I think we have a slide now with the three topics. So as Kathleen said, we do have, we're very lucky in that we're having three uh, uh, talks to, to set up these three uh, workshops, which is absolutely brilliant. And then within the three workshops, I'm just going to recap. We've got um, what pathways we should focus on. So thinking back to that pathway that we've sh that I've shown, that would maybe be a discharge pathway. But there might be um, another pathway that you could imagine, which is around about um, support for uh, long term conditions. Uh, there could be a pathway that's about admission. There could be a pathway around about diagnostics. There's a whole stack. We can use that term pathway in a lot of different ways. And if you're in group one, if you could have a think about it during lunchtime, just have a think about which pathways you think should be the ones that we could focus on usefully in that afternoon session. So what we'll have in each of these sessions is we'll have a small, short talk and then there will be enough time for everyone who wants to have their say, hopefully to have their say. We're a little bit constrained by time, but hopefully um, we'll have enough time to to cover folks who who want to want to pitch in with ideas. Group two is going to be, is there a place for technology in the development of whole system working? So again, we're thinking about that whole system working from the individual's point of view, but we're thinking where is what's the what's the role of technology in this? And we'd really love to hear your ideas, both of where you think there's something that we could do add into the system, maybe something that's worked well in COVID that you don't want to lose, or even something that you feel is not very well connected. And this could be at the level of um, using video conferencing for appointments, or it could be just how as a GP do I get the the um, information from the hospital uh, after a discharge. And my apologies, that's a squeaky ball and that's my dog having pounced on the squeaky ball behind and hopefully he's not going to continue doing that. No, I don't think he is. Uh, group three is about how can we provide access to services differently? And that's a really important one. If you're in that group, could you have, again have a bit of a think about it around about, uh, around about the, the um, uh, Right, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm watching the, the chats as they come in uh, around about accessing services and that can be any of the services in health and care. So hopefully that tees us up for this afternoon. I'd like to explain how we're going to do this afternoon. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a break now for lunch. I'm going to take questions in a moment, but we're going to have a break now for lunch. And when you come back, if you could come back into this link, you can either leave the meeting and come back in. This link will be running for the whole of the hour. It'll be a bit boring because all you'll get is the, the slide that Grant's put up around about the virtual lunch. But you can either leave it, leave it switched on or you can leave and then come back. What we'll have is meet the meeting rooms for the afternoon will then be, the links for those will be put into the chat. So when you come back at one o'clock, you'll find that there are links in the chat, embedded in the chat, and I'll talk you through how you get into those those meetings. Because what you what you'll do is you'll come into this meeting, and from this meeting, you'll then get uh, the access to the other uh, other rooms on uh, on Teams. I'm afraid Teams is not very elegant in its way that it does. We have found a way of doing it. Now, uh, we've just got five minutes. Uh, I was wondering, are there any questions? Has anyone got any 
issues at this stage with the with connectivity for this afternoon or any questions around about that um, whole system uh, thinking. So Elizabeth, is it just worth saying that if you if you haven't been assigned a everybody has, then you can just choose. Um, but obviously try and go to two different ones. Yeah, Kirstie, absolutely right, Kirsty. Thank you. It's it's always lovely having other people catching up the things that I'm missing. So yes, if you haven't been, if you've pitched up now and you haven't been assigned a group, do feel free just to choose one. Um, there is enough of a spread. As I said before, the reason why we've done some uh, some assigning is so that we don't have we've now got 90 people uh, that we don't have 90 in one session and nobody in session two and three. So uh, do feel free to choose um, choose which one you'd like to go to. Robbie, you've got a question. Yeah, uh, as well as being a councillor, I'm also a pharmacist and I have a particular interest in uh, Tony McDavid's presentation. Uh, any chance I could uh, swap into that one? Absolutely. Feel free Thank to you go. Much. Yep. Ruth. Yes, I was interested in your example of the pathway of care for the dementia person and I actually thought what we need to be careful on Shetland is that one one pathway won't fit all islands. The, the different places on Shetland have different um, means of access and, and I think it's important to to actually sort of develop pathways of care which which include various places. That's a really good point. Thank you, Ruth. That's again. That's that's something. Uh, that's something that we should weave into into the pathways. Definitely. That's uh, that's an excellent point. And I know that it, it, there's also there's also there's almost two sides to that. We've got a pathway that might be different, but we also have. Um, I know that some of the smaller islands don't have a GP, for example. They might have nurse um, uh, nurses. Uh, on the island. So the level of service on each of the small islands maybe varies as well. So I know that uh, having uh, I'm, I'm learning, hopefully learning fast about about what you've got on on Shetland, which is not one homogeneous. It never is one homogeneous area. But no, that's a, a good point. Well made. Any other um, any other points that we want to make before we break for lunch? I always leave a little bit extra time because it's that sticky button thing of um, you click it and then it it highlights and then it doesn't highlight and sorry can I ask a stupid question there are there are no such things go on Jane um so in the the list you've got us it says parallel sessions two and three so we go into a different topic in the afternoon is that right that's correct so we've got three topics that we're covering in the afternoon and we're doing those three topics twice so okay, we're okay. going to do three topics for around about 45 minutes then we've got a coffee break and then we've got another uh, you've got another crack at it so if you do one before the coffee break and a different one after the coffee break that would uh -huh. probably make sense then you cover two out of the three which should be grand and don't worry about how you access it I will talk you through it again once we come back from from lunch so what we're going to what we will do is uh, as I say the the link for them will be in the chat but I think it's best if we all come back here um, at one o'clock and then I will release everyone into their their respective rooms um, don't worry we also have again is always we always have to have a plan b plan b is that one of the sessions is actually in this this room so if you don't manage to get into the other rooms we, you will just end up in this room you will not end up in some kind of digital hinterland or wasteland that um that you can't get back out of that's great just was checking i was interpreting it right okay <laughs> thank you have a nice lunch perfect okay so i'm going to suggest that we all break now for for lunch we'll come back at one o'clock as i say um do feel free to either close down the meeting and come back uh, you can just use the same link or just leave it open that's absolutely fine we